Hey people, thanks for tuning in. So here it is, straight up. If you want or need the most compact form factor, go with the 11 to 22. If you already own a 10 to 18 and you want or need a budget option, go with the Canon adapter. If you don't own any of this, go with the 11 to 22 right away, because price-wise, pretty much the both of those equal this one. If you don't own any of this, but you do own a couple of Canon STM lenses from your Canon DSLR, for example, go with the Canon adapter. So there it is. If you want to know how I arrived at these conclusions, check out the video. Now in this video we're going to talk about quite a couple of different topics, because I want you to have a firm understanding of what you can and cannot expect these lenses to do. We're going to talk about things like low light performance, autofocus performance, vignetting, chromatic aberration, sharpness, ghosting, image stabilization and so on. But don't worry, there's chapter links to each part of this video in the video description. So let's kick this off with look and handling. The 11 to 22 has a nice metallic taupe finish. The focus ring moves perfectly. Not too loose, not too tight, super smooth, which is awesome. Also, it has a nice thickness to it, so it's easy to pull focus with this lens. The mount is metal, durable and stable. Now to use it, you have to place it into its shooting position, which will extend the lens barrel like so. And when using the zoom ring, the lens barrel moves a little as well. Now that's the 10 to 18 with the adapter. The finish of the lens, the finish of the adapter perfectly match the finish of the M50 body. So the three of those aesthetically are a nice combo. Focus ring hmm, doesn't move as smoothly as with the 11 to 22 and is also thinner, although the whole lens is bigger, which is kind of a bummer because pulling focus manually with the 11 to 22 is a pleasure. Here you kind of have to get used to it. Zoom ring feels nice, there is no shooting position, you can use it as is, but when using the zoom ring, the lens barrel extends and retracts a little. With the adapter on it, you get a mount on the adapter, which is super awesome because once it's on the M50 body and, which is the kicker, you have a quick release plate that is slim enough and mounted like this, you can now access the battery and SD card slot, which you couldn't if you had to apply the quick release plate to the camera body, which you would have to if you would use the 11 to 22. So for somebody who is terribly annoyed that they have to take the quick release plate off to reach the battery and the SD card, actually the 10 to 18 in combination with the adapter is awesome. If you have a quick release plate that is rather slim, you can get those for a couple of bucks. So that's really an upside handling wise for the 10 to 18 adapter combo, the biggest one in my opinion. Of course, form factor wise, this is way bulkier. It's a completely different look. Of course, the camera is more front heavy, but then again, we're talking about 200 grams, so you're not gonna strain your wrist too much. However, if you need the most compact form factor, obviously the 11 to 22 beats the 10 to 18 adapter combo because you're not gonna get a more compact setup than this while still having a super wide angle on your camera body. It fits perfectly and is aesthetically very pleasing. This is how it looks when you use it. But if you have to put it away, this is as compact as you're gonna get with a super wide angle and the Canon mirrorless series. Now something I really, really like when it comes to handling is manual buttons on the lens body itself. With the 10 to 18, you can quickly turn on or off, stabilization, and switch between manual focus and autofocus because there are dedicated buttons on the lens body. Now the 11 to 22 doesn't have such buttons. To access the same functions, you either have to do a menu dive or find a clever way to map these functions to the camera buttons. Now the majority of super wide angle lenses, including primes and super wide angle zooms like the ones we're talking about right now, have problems with chromatic aberration or color fringing as it is also commonly referred to. It usually occurs when there's a bright background like for example the clouds in the sky and a somewhat dark object in front of them like for example those trees. Fortunately enough with the M50 chromatic aberration can be dealt with internally because the lens profiles of both the 11 to 22 and the 10 to 18 are stored inside the camera so it automatically corrects color fringing. Also as soon as you take center stage and the camera focuses on your face, even with a super wide angle at its wide end, you're getting a little bit of background blur or bokeh. And whatever chromatic aberration is left will be taken care of because it'll just vanish inside the background blur. So this is what you're getting from the 11 22 at its 11 millimeter wide end. And that's the kind of chromatic aberration that is left in such a scenario. Now let's check out what happens as soon as I leave the frame. 
Now chromatic aberration increased a little bit, but for video work both these lenses are definitely usable. Same shot with the 10 to 18 at its 10 mm wide end, and as it relates to chromatic aberration, practically the same results. Whatever is left of chromatic aberration disappears in the background blur as soon as I'm in front of the camera. Check out the results up here, and as soon as I leave the frame, a little bit more of chromatic aberration will come in, but like with the 1122, not a lot. Now corner shading or vignetting is a common problem with any super wide angle lens really and the 11 to 22 and the 10 to 18 are no exception to that. What you're looking at right now is the 11 to 22 at its 11 mm wide end with internal vignetting or corner shading correction turned on because like with chromatic aberration the M50 can use the lens profiles of the 11 to 22 and the 10 to 18 to perfectly correct vignetting. So it's totally up to you whether you want it perfectly corrected in the camera or whether you maybe want a little vignetting. For all intents and purposes for vlog you might even choose to turn automatic correction off because a little vignette is going to increase the focus on your own person as soon as you're in front of the camera. With both lenses, that's totally up to you. It's personal preference. So this is what you're getting from the 11 to 22 at its 11 mm wide end with internal vignetting correction turned on. Pay attention to what happens in the corners as I'm now going to turn correction off. Same test with the 10 to 18, once again at its wide end, which in this case is 10 millimeters, with internal vignetting correction turned on. Pay attention to what happens in the corners of the image as I'm now going to turn correction off. Now as far as ghosting or flaring is concerned, you're definitely gonna get some with a 10 to 18 at 10, 14 or 18 millimeters. It's definitely more noticeable than with the 11 to 22. Just remember, as soon as you film into the sun or any kind of light source, you're gonna get flaring and ghosting with the 10 to 18 and it's gonna be noticeable at 10 millimeters. At 14 millimeters and also at 18 millimeters. Ah uh, yeah, there it is, there it is. That's the flare or ghosting you're getting from the 11 to 22 at 11 millimeters, filming into the sun. Much less than with the 10 to 18. This is 11 millimeters. Let's go to like 15. Oh, did it disappear? Oh yeah, it almost disappeared right here. So that's where it used to be, so at 15. It's less, ah, uh, there it, it appears and reappears depending, it also depends on the angle of the sun. But overall, much better flare resistance than the 10 to 18. Now, is that good or is that bad? Really depends on your personal preference. For vlogging, as long as you make sure that the flare doesn't cover your face, in my opinion, a lot of the times, I think it looks rather nice. Now, as far as distortion is concerned, with neither of those lenses, are you gonna get around a typical super wide angle look of your face when you're close to one of these lenses, it being at its wide end. This is what you're getting from the 10 to 18 at a 10 millimeter wide end at close proximity. And this is what you're getting at 18 millimeters. Less distortion, but it's still there. Do you have to care for that? Not really because no one has the direct comparison to a completely undistorted image anyway. Just letting you know you're not getting one. Same test 11 to 22 currently at the 11 millimeter wide end and at close proximity. Same kind of distortion as we saw with the 10 to 18. At 22 millimeters basically the same result as with the 10 to 18 maybe slightly better then again you're gonna get away with it anyway because no one has the direct comparison to a completely undistorted image. Now, as far as autofocus motor noise is concerned, both the 10 to 18 and the 11 to 22 use STM technology, silent stepping motors, which are great for video. Now there is differences even among the STM capable lenses when it comes to autofocus noise, but especially the 10 to 18 and the 11 to 22, maybe with the 18 to 135 are like virtually 100% silent. You don't even pick up anything even on the internal audio. So those are both great for video in that respect. And in 1080p, the M50 offers dual pixel autofocus. So for vlogging, there's no better combination. You're getting fast, precise, and reliable autofocus performance, and it is silent, even when using the internal microphones. Here's the autofocus test with the 11 to 22 at 11 millimeters selfie shot.
are the same test with the 10 to 18 at 10 millimeters adapted to the Canon M50 via the EFS to EFM adapter. And as you could see, the lens and the adapter work very well together. Maybe slightly slower performance, maybe slightly smoother, but basically up to par with the native 11-22. to Difficult test for the system from behind the camera, both lenses at their tele ends. I'm forcing the camera to pull focus from infinity to or near the close limit and back, while at the same time enforcing a drastic change in exposure. As you can see, things work really smoothly with the 11-22. to this is the exact same test with the 10 to 18 at its tally end, and as you can see, basically the same results. Smooth focus pulling and smooth exposure change. So once again, both these lenses pretty much perform equally. Then here's a sharpness comparison. Both shots were done with the lenses being at their wide end and using their fastest respective f-stop, because that's how you're going to use them most often when vlogging. So on the left side you can see the 10 to 18 at an f4.5, and on the right side you can see the 11 to 22 at an f4. This is the 100% view, and once again they perform up to par with each other. If we take a closer look, this is the 200% view. If I had to call it, I would go with the 10 to 18 and say it's a tiny little bit sharper than the 11 to 22. So again, both lenses offer very similar performance, this time as far as sharp for video is concerned. Now both these lenses use focus by wire. This means that when you turn the focus ring, you're not actually changing the position of a lens element inside the lens barrel. Rather what happens is the lens tells the camera that the focus ring has been moved and then the camera adjusts the position of the lens element accordingly so focus sits where it needs to sit. This means that you can turn the focus ring indefinitely. There is no start and stop on it with either of those lenses, which might be a problem if you're used to using lenses that offer that functionality, that have a start and a stop. With the M50, that simply means that you're going to have to resort to using focus peaking, a function that is offered by the M50 and it will allow you to perfectly determine where focus is. So manually focusing with both these lenses and the M50, although it's a focus by wire system, is definitely easy and workable. It might take you some time to get used to it if you're coming from a different system though. Now, as far as bokeh is concerned, you're not gonna get a lot with either of those lenses. That's just not in the cards for you if you're using a super wide angle zoom. This is the kind of background blur you can expect from the 11 to 22 at its 11 millimeter wide end and an f4. And this is what you're getting at the 22 millimeter tele end and an f5.6. Same test with a 10 to 18, currently at its 10 mm wide end and at an f4.5. In direct comparison, the 11 to 22 does a little better when it comes to bokeh or background blur, but neither you nor your viewership is going to have the direct comparison, so for the end result, it really doesn't make that much of a difference. Let's go to 18 mm and check out what the 10 to 18 can do for us at its tally end and at an f5.6. Again, in direct comparison, the 11 to 22 does a little better, but the differences are marginal at best. Now as far as low light performance is concerned, from the get-go neither of those lenses can be considered a decent option for low light situations. For an APS-C camera like the M50, if we're generous, good low light capabilities start at an f2.8, better yet an f2. So with both these lenses, their f-stops start way too high up. The 11 to 22, which is what you're looking at right now, starts at an f4, the 10 to 18 starts at an f4.5. So technically speaking, the 11 to 22 lets in one third a stop more light and should technically give you the brighter image. However, in the real world, you're not going to notice much of a difference if any, which means that in either case, using either one of the lenses in such a situation, you're basically going to shoot the M50 at roughly 6400 ISO, which means in both cases you're going to get a somewhat dirty image because raising the ISO will bring in digital noise. Let's talk image stabilization. What you're looking at right now, that's the 10 to 18 at its 10 mm wide end using nothing but optical stabilization. If we look at the specs, the 10 to 18 can correct for about 4 stops, the 11 to 22 can correct for about 3 stops. So on paper, the 10 to 18 has the 11 to 22 beat. 
Then again, that's just a stills-related spec, and it only refers to a situation where all you're trying to do is get the maximally steady shot, which entails you not moving at all. However, under real-world conditions, when vlogging and walking, you're not going to notice much of a difference, if any, between the two lenses as far as image stabilization is concerned. So let's wrap up this video with a couple of comparison shots between the two lenses using optical stabilization, digital stabilization levels 1 and 2. 10 to 18, 10 mm wide end, optical stabilization only. Just walking up some stairs. to 18, 10 mm wide end, optical stabilization plus digital stabilization level 1. Again, walking up the stairs. Bear in mind that whenever you use digital stabilization, the camera is going to crop into the image, meaning you lose some resolution and you lose some viewing angle. Sometimes the trade-off for a more stable shot is worth that, sometimes it's not. So always keep that in mind. 10 to 18, 10 mm wide end, this time optical stabilization plus second level digital image stabilization, which is referred to in the menus as enhanced. Once again, crop, meaning less resolution, less viewing angle, but a more stable shot. Same trade-off as before, you have to decide for yourself, depending on the situation, whether the trade-off is worth it or not. 11 to 22, 11 millimeter wide end, optical stabilization only. You already know what the deal is. I'm just gonna shut up and walk up those stairs. Eleven to twenty-two, eleven millimeter wide end, optical stabilization plus digital level one. Eleven to twenty-two, eleven millimeter wide end, as always. I know it gets old. Optical stabilization plus digital level two, enhanced. Heavy crop, heavy trade-off for a more stable shot, but sometimes it might just be worth it. And that's a wrap. I hope you got a good idea of what these lenses can and cannot do, and also hope this video helped you in deciding which one might be the one for you. So, Modoth and Unliehon, and everybody else of course, if you liked the video, if you found it helpful, please make sure to leave a thumbs up, it's greatly appreciated. Any kind of comment or feedback is welcome, and I'll try to answer as quickly as possible. All the tech that I've used in this video is linked in the description. As always, thank you so much for your time, thank you for watching, and hopefully see you again soon. Thank you.